do it. I get the wrong sample. I'm a fix it, get it right. I put your love on the mantle. I put fall in the night. Leadership matters because society needs leaders. It needs people to step up and to take control over their social situation and to try and make a contribution. Also, it needs people to encourage others to maximize their skills, to make the most of their abilities and create a better world. It also enables you to develop skills that you can take from sport into other fields of your life and make a contribution there as well. So, practicing the skills to be a good leader is um, why leadership matters. The Grassroots Programme will be a collection of resources designed to support national associations uh, to deliver their own youth leadership programmes and also to deliver their, and create their own youth leadership panels. So national associations will be able to access funding to support the implementation of this programme. One of the outcomes that we'd love from this programme is for more national associations to have youth leadership panels. With these panels, that will also provide a pathway to lead on to the other programmes as part of AOIL and also onto other programmes like the Youth Leadership Festival. Our aim is for the resources to be adaptable and translatable so that they can suit any of the contexts of the 42 member national associations we have. Yeah, my message to uh, the young leaders would be, um, because I see a lot of people who want to get involved in hockey, um, so yeah, don't be afraid, don't give up too easy. Uh, I know that um, us, um, uh, let's say the more senior guys, uh, sometimes not making life easy for you. Uh, we might be uh, too much telling what needs to be done because we believe you have the experience, but uh, feel free to push back. So feel free uh, to push back, to be assertive. Uh, don't allow your environment to say that things are difficult or it's not possible. Um, also not the senior management of a federation, of a club. Of course, do it with respect, do it in a healthy way. But uh, yeah, keep knocking on the door and uh, don't give up. We need you guys and girls. Uh, we need you to be on our chairs in the future. Uh, we were also sometimes in the position. Um, so uh, really looking forward to, uh, to you taking our seats in the future. Um, so go for it. This program can really help you, I hope, and trust to make a next step there and to become the next uh, generation of leaders and bringing the hockey family even further than we are today. Thank you. I think that you should take part in these programs because I think it's a great opportunity to grow the sport in your country, to gain some leadership experience for yourself that you can use in the real world, in work. And I think that the second project will really give you an opportunity to start something that could be much bigger than your self in your country for hockey. Mm, I feel like it's the first step that you can take in some leadership uh, position, like in, in general. It doesn't have to be sport, honestly, in particular, but it's really the starting point for you that should help you with the tools it provides and all the knowledge you can get from it as well. So anyone should actually participate in this um, leadership program because it helps develop good leaders 
for um, the future of the hockey federations. My excellent advice to you if you're considering joining this program or also why you should join it uh, is that you have the chance to meet a lot of people who are active with hockey from different countries in Europe, it's across the continent and um, you'll be able to, to have a much bigger network, more contacts uh, and have the chance to, to be inspired by them and then you of course if you want to you can take it home with you but it's uh, really nice that you have the ability to way easier reach out uh, and work together or ask for help uh, from your uh, your colleagues <laughs> so to say in, in the program so I'd really recommend it to you if you if you're interested and you want to expand your network meet new people go for it well um, I think you should join the program um, if you want to explore uh, and you want to learn um, I believe that every young person every young person in our sports in hockey, other sports uh, has potential, um, and it's your job to use your, your full potential and to leave a legacy in sports. Um, and that's what we hope to do uh, by uh, by giving the program and by you joining. I've learned a heck of a lot from this Erasmus project, particularly about the way that leadership works. I know it's a lot more than just getting people to do what you want to do. It's actually about upskilling people and encouraging them to play to their strengths and make a contribution in a bigger way. And that's one of the reasons why I think it's important that you should take part in this leadership program. Because if not you, then who? Leadership is a way for you to actually maximize the skills that you possess to contribute to something bigger than just your immediate surroundings, to build teams and to help others to make the most of the skills that they have as well. So leadership can be a really important transformational thing and it can enable you to take a bigger part in society more generally and to play to your strengths in many cases. So for me leadership isn't about like a title or a position, it's about examples and actions. So if you want to make a difference then joining something like this would be really beneficial, not just to yourself but to a club or a federation that maybe needs some fresh blood and some fresh ideas from a youth perspective. Yeah, what I what would be my message also to uh, the hockey federations is uh, take youth leadership seriously. Um, I know uh, and I feel it the same in my own country. Sometimes it's something which doesn't have the priority because we're really uh, looking at the basic stuff of, of we need the pitches, we need the competition running, we need the umpires. So I understand this is uh, what a federation has to do. At the same time, I think we have a responsibility, all of us have a responsibility uh, to work with the young generation and not only put this on our website, uh, but also to actively get them involved, to give them the space, uh, to mentor them, uh, to work with them, to listen to them um, and also not too easily sometimes to give up because it's sometimes not easy. We might say they're not like us, we were playing on the streets and this is a different generation, which is probably true. Um, but I would really challenge everybody uh, to, to go on this journey. Uh, I think we have a responsibility towards this generation and also as a legacy uh, to work intensively with young people, get them involved, learn from them and to, uh, to make sure that we have a sustainable development for the future. This one over, and I'll explain in a second why. Here you see the um, partners who are joining in this Erasmus program. We started two years ago, and we're now almost at the end. So at the end of this year, we're going to deliver all the outputs, and we would like to give an update today of you where we are, and also ask you for your support and your help. A little bit back to why we actually started uh, with this one. Um, when I was um, my name is Gino from Czech Republic and when I sometimes have discussions with people about getting the young ones involved um, there was this quote from some people who looked a little bit like this one okay, this is not the club management so don't worry it's a little bit of <laughs> half humorous but it is in fact that you see in a lot of cases that management of the clubs of the federation it's a bit more male, it's a bit more senior there's nothing bad with being male and senior, but I think we all know uh, that there are opportunities there to uh, 
to work on. So, except that the female part is missing here, we also saw that in a lot of cases the youth voice is not heard enough and there's an opportunity there, so that's why we started with this program. And because myself, I'm not in the, I'm more on this picture, I think, than in the age of the youth leaders, and this is a program for youth leaders and about youth leaders. That is why I asked Sadiq to take the lead in this one um, and as one of the youth leaders in this program to take you through and uh, with the colleagues of Cameron and Thomas following up later to give you a flavor of what we're doing. Sadiq, the word is It's indeed a very short presentation. <laughs> I'm going to talk to you a bit through uh, on why this project matters. Uh, I'm also going to keep it short because I can talk about this topic for days. Uh, so it's one of my favorite topics. Uh, um, I'm going to start off with asking you two simple questions. Um, it's very easy. Uh, the first one is I want you all to think of a young person in our sports um, who wants to help, who wants to grow, and wants to get involved in your federation. So someone who is not in your federation yet, and who is young, young, I mean 16, 18, up to 28, 29, so you may, you're not young anymore, you know, uh, do you have someone in mind at this moment? Then the second question will be, did you already ask them uh, for coffee? Have a little chat and ask them how they can get involved, what they can do, uh, and what you can do for them, because you can learn from them, but they can definitely learn from you as well. I'm not going to ask you all separately because it would take a lot of time and we do not have that time. Uh, but some of you will say, oh yeah, we did. Some of you will say, oh, no, we did not, uh, but we could do. Um, and that's super normal. Uh, and that's a bit why this project uh, exists. The outcome of the project will be a youth leadership program on two different levels. Um, on the development of a uh, Hockey people, um, how they can evolve, what they can do, uh, more details about that. So I'm going to talk you through. Um, I'm going to skip forward to a beautiful quote. Uh, we cannot always build the future for our youth, but we can build our youth for the future. The skills I have learned in the past years and also in this project of youth hockey is a uh, savings. The fact that I'm up here speaking to all of you in English is a, is a skill I've learned in the past years. Thanks to Digital Baby, thanks to Sebastian Tugnet, Cameron Gino. Uh, they helped me a lot. Uh, I, I, I use them, uh, but they use me as well. Uh, I learned a lot from them. And yeah, that, that's why, why this project matters. Youth in hockey, youth in sports is a big group. Give them a platform, they can speak, uh, let them be heard. If I go back to the, this presentation, these are all the participating federation, participating organizations, and almost all of them, we have two people in our group. We always have one in, uh, in the project working for the federation, and then we have a youth leader that makes the project about youth leaders, that makes the youth leaders have a platform to speak up and to give direct feedback on what we should include in the youth leadership grassroots program. So, I'll give the Kevin now. Thank you, Cedric. Excellent. So, Cedric has just told you why it's important. Um, but now I want to tell you exactly what we're going to do. Um, so, I'm Cameron Rossi, I work for the European Hockey Federation, and I'm involved in this programme in my role as the administrator of the leadership panel. Um, so, I, I help Cedric to, to make sure our youth leadership panel stands and, and has fun, basically. I'm, I'm there to support Cedric and, and kind of the other chair. So, the thing that I'm most involved with on this project is the Youth Leader Grassroots Programme, also been referred to as Intellectual Output 2, but I'll try and refer to it as the Youth Leader Grassroots Programme in the most part. Um, so, first obvious question is, what is it? So, the idea of, of IO2 is the creation of a grassroots programme 
that can be adaptable to the context of all European hockey nations. One of our biggest challenges as a federation is that there are 42 nations with 42 nations' needs. So what we are trying to do is we are trying to create a set of resources that are adaptable to all the different contexts throughout Europe. They're going to be um, quite open, but we're going to help our national associations to adapt these to their context. So who is working on it? At the moment we have Hockey Wales, who has a, a very well developed youth leadership programme. Um, we also have me and, and Cedric and the youth leadership panel. Um, and then we also have Street Games, who are a, an organisation that are uh, well experienced in creating youth programmes and grassroots engagement. Who's the target? So the target is really for those nations with an underdeveloped youth programme. So not necessarily the Waleses of the world, where they already have these programmes in place. Um, they'll be better suited, or the people from those programmes will be better suited to what Thomas will talk about later. But for me, the real focus is on those nations who don't really have a youth panel or a youth platform yet. Because um, what we'd really like these resources to do is to be a launching point for those nations um, to then create their own thing. So one of the outcomes that we'd like as a part of our resources is that the final piece of work that we do with them is to create their own project and one of the suggestions for a project is a youth panel or a youth festival or just an event that is led by youth. So part of the final module that we'll actually do is, is that. So what have we actually done on it so far? Um, so we began with a, a Covid impacted meeting where we were half in Leeds and half in Amsterdam. Those who could get to Amsterdam went and those who couldn't um, stay in Leeds. It's so yours, Gina. Yeah. And what we did there is we did an online jam board where we got everybody to put their ideas on the post-it notes um, and then that was shared across both groups. Uh, a, a fun twist that we did to that is anybody who was over the age of 30, which is the uh, classification for youth, is it under 30? Um, we made them use one colour of post-it notes, and anybody under 30 we used different colour post-it notes. Um, it didn't really have any real purpose in the end, apart from a bit of fun, and just to make sure that we got a good, good amount of contribution from our youth leaders, and they didn't just sit behind them, what the, the old people in the group put on their board. What we then did is we then took all of those ideas um, and then we went into a content development stage. So working with the two other organisations, we came together and we developed the content. We, we found, created a structure and, and the basis for how the content was going to be worked, based on the ideas from everybody in the meeting. Then once we, we had a, a rough idea for the content, we then took that draft and we had a meeting in Manchester where during the meeting we tested some of the activities that we'd like to include. We talked through the programme, uh, we got suggestions for gaps that might need to be filled, additional information, and then we also talked about the outside of the programme. So not, not the inside of the content, the, the surroundings, the structure, the environment, the actual participants, how would we get them, what would their profile need to be. Um, we talked about the outside, so we took then both of those bits of information and then we refined the content. So again, working with, with the group. Uh, to develop this, we went on, did some online meetings to refine the content and to produce our first go at the resource pack. Um, it goes around this way. So, um, what we then did is we then took that resource pack and we created a youth leader training module, which we delivered online, and then we also had a recording that was accessible to all the youth leaders that are part of the pilot. Um, yeah, it was kept online so that they could go back and they could pause it and they could go through it in their own time as well. What then happened is then uh, some of the pilots were delivered with the partner nations from that first slide that Cedric showed. Um, and yeah, these pilots were delivered in their country with local leaders and they made adaptions to what suits them best. What we then did is we've then taken some feedback from this and Cedric has worked quite hard on this where he's spoken individually to the youth leaders who delivered pilots um, to, to have conversational feedback sent out a form initially to get their initial ideas, to get them to um, to think before they speak to Cedric. But then what Cedric did is, is he spoke to them um, online, on the phone, and he pulled out some more ideas and had some more conversations with them so we could truly understand what they were writing on the form. 
So that was a really useful thing. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take Cedric's, um, Cedric's feedback um, and we're going to have a final content review where we'll create the final resources for this program. Once we have them, the plan is to, uh, to have a program that is capable of being delivered locally by local youth leaders. What we really want to avoid is that for this level of program, we want to avoid that speaking English is the barrier to being a youth leader. That shouldn't be the case. So what we'd like is we'd like the program to be completely adaptable, translatable, and so that anybody can go and deliver it in their local, local association. Um, and what we'll do is we'll then support the delivery of these resources using a solidarity grant. So if a national association really wants to deliver these and they want support, whether it be having a youth leader go and visit or they just need some support with the, the resources of delivering it and getting all the youth leaders in the same place, then we can support them using the solidarity grant. Um, and what we'd really love to see if we, if I had a dream, uh, an output for this programme, is anybody who, who takes a solidarity grant, I'd really love to see a youth leadership panel that's up and running in the country and then they can contribute to the programmes that uh, Thomas is going to talk about and also things like our Youth Leadership Festival. So that's the idea of the grassroots module and I'll now hand over to Thomas. If you've got any questions for me, we'll have an opportunity at the end, so make a note and then we can chat about it later. Alright, my name is uh, Thomas Hichelman, uh, with one N, it was written uh, with a double one, the German version to us, uh, but I'm from Holland. And uh, I'm part of the uh, Amsterdam University of Applied Sciences. Uh, Amsterdam, my city of origin as well. Uh, and uh, I run uh, the program for the Sport Leadership Institute, being part of the Faculty of Sports Management and Business in Amsterdam. So, but I'm also from hockey, because I'm national coach of uh, the Dutch uh, ladies team. Uh, fantastic team, of course. Privileged to uh, work with them. Up till Paris, uh, I'm like, uh, uh, working uh, with them and also founder of Sportways, maybe known to you, but it's a, a children hockey camp event organization that uh, uh, runs camps throughout Europe but also the world. Uh, okay, about the Aspiring Inspiring Youth Leader program might be a step up to the grassroots program of Cameron that you run locally in your uh, own uh, federation, nation, uh, your world of hockey. Uh, but uh, it can also be uh, um, uh, ready-made for people that uh, are not, uh, who are not part of the grassroots program. So it's like an open program for a certain age group. Uh, yeah, and why also? Because yeah, there are committees for coaching here, there are committees uh, for officiating, but there uh, is no committee for governance, for uh, the management of federations or clubs. Uh, so, a good opportunity, of course, to invite young people uh, to enter this world of governance and management yeah, to uh, um, create a better future yeah, for hockey in this case. So, about the leadership uh, component, sports and youth leadership. Well, the field of sport is uh, one of the best playing and training grounds yeah, to uh, skill up uh, your competencies. Uh, in uh, the field of leadership uh, execution. So it's a great area uh, within and around sports yeah, to practice, yeah, to have an opportunity to lead certain processes and projects. How to become a leader, it's actually accessible to everyone because everyone to a certain degree can become a leader uh, in his own life, yeah, but also serving a community. So what is youth leadership? Of course, there are many traits, different traits, many skills, but it's about cognition. You can learn it, and that's very important. It's something that can be learned and be taught. Uh, and this program, of course, is a teaching program and training program. If you ask yourselves why a youth leadership program, I think um, more or less that is quite apparent or clear to us maybe how that could contribute but of course to infuse and inspire the next generation yeah, of youngsters among us to drive the sport forward but also to improve the governance level of governance in hockey yeah, to introduce them to that field and it's maybe uh, right now an unidentified interest group yeah? it's not like uh, we're generating this group in Holland we 
we have a, a youth board in clubs. I don't know if that's in every nation the same, but those youth boards, they of course organize the parties, the big club parties, or the big this or this. They have a certain couple of events, great experience you gain there, of course, organizing stuff, being responsible, representing an event within your club in your smaller community. But of course, now we're gonna scale it up today. We're gonna expose them to a larger world. So create that next gen of leadership, empower also the values within the club or within the nation, and vitalize your agenda, yeah, your agendas. So uh, this is a dream, yeah, we profiled the candidate. So no one is like this candidate, yeah, but it's an inspirational uh, step up to a person, yeah, how you could envision yourself um, uh, by means of uh, the development in front of you. So it's a change maker, yeah. Uh, social entrepreneurship or entrepreneurship, yeah, is part of the project that this uh, person will run in our program. Governance activities, but also about the health and equality and sustainability issues that could be served within the um, confines of uh, a project. Uh, but key to all of this is, of course, the enjoyment of hockey that we all enjoy, hopefully, yeah? And then we use it as a lever, yeah, to create, yeah, more energy and power uh, to use the um, power of hockey for also in a broader sense. So now, uh, who is this person? Uh, European, involved in hockey, wants to create impact in the nation, yeah, could also be smaller, can also be larger, yeah. Proficient in English, 100% uh, participation for a program with a certain uh, yeah, uh, limited investment in yourself, but I think uh, it makes sense. 60 hours, two days of physical meetings, uh, in person meetings, internet access is necessary, of course. Yeah, And uh, this person brings a plan bring the plan into the program. So you can only enter this program uh, once you uh, have an ambition. So we're not giving you a plan, yeah? You need to bring, boil up a plan to um, present. So what happens, uh, the kind of plan is you want to create a new club, for instance, in Europe. How do you do that? Uh, you want to create a hockey program for children with a disability. You want to build a national school league. You want to donate a field to the school in Greece, or you want to do. You want to have more female coaches being active in your federation or in your nation. That could be a project that you could bring. Huh? How do you enter this program? So those candidates, uh, um, they're being recruited through the federation. So of course. The Federation needs to embrace this program. You need to embrace this program. Uh, promotes a candidate, checks the requirements. <laughs> Once we have this person, and the Federation assigns also a mentor. I'm looking, where is the mentor? Yeah, the mentor, because we need a mentor from the Federation as well as a candidate. Yeah, then the moderators from the EHF we'll start with an online intake. After this, yeah, there will be, and this is sort of like qualifying, so this commitment in time needs to be made, but also you need to qualify to a certain degree, because in the Dragon's Den, yeah, uh, you need to show, of course, present your plan, and then it will be evaluated, and six to eight people will be selected into the program in June. So we have this ramp up in the program, and you need to prepare yourself, to present in the Dragon's Den, and then you'll be selected to enter the program in June. January 24, that might be starting, that's our focus that we're gonna start here. Yeah, the, so that's like one year, 10 months away from now. Yeah, uh, and there will be some prep time that I'm gonna show you later. So once you enter the program, we have three, three moments of a curriculum session consisting of two online sessions. So it is, should be feasible. Second one and third one here, of course, opening of the program is just explaining this pathway. Yeah, And then you start with your mentor preparing for the in-person final event, where you present during an EC or during an e EHL final eight uh, event, um, your plan, yeah, your project plan. 
So it is more or less the pathway in time. How does the uh, uh, curriculum look like? Uh, we want to upskill this person because there are many, uh, actually many subjects that you could train a person in. But if we're looking at the profile itself, of course you need to have some cultural understanding. So if you go over cross border or cross nation, of course, the cultural context, DNA also, yeah? how is the ecosystem of sports organized, but also how does it work within the federation itself, but also within other cultures, yeah? needs to be sort of like understood by the candidate. And of course, the implications of the cultural and organizational DNA of other nations, but also within your own nation. The underlying current of this program is that, of course, personal development, leading yourself. You got these three skills: yeah, leading yourself, yeah, leading a team, leading an organization. Well, up to the second level, leading a team. Yeah, we're going to uptrain this uh, uh, candidate. Uh, because uh, highly feasible will be the fact that he will be leading a team or a small unit yeah, to prepare his plan. Then, you need to come with a plan, of course. And what we would like to add to this plan is, of course, a, a degree of value, of course, something added value, something extra. So, a value creation is one of the elementary parts of the program because, of course, uh, you can add value in the social development goal area as well as, but also it could be money. Because if you want to raise funds for a field in Greece, yeah, social development goals will not bring you there. And on the other hand, you get it with a certain purpose, of course, because we want to support yeah, the Greek mission yeah, to develop hockey in their nation for some whatever reason, of course. So we're going to upskill them uh, in the area of value creation. How you do you do it? It's also created a little bit to the next one, project management. It's also building the business case. Yeah? Because now you need to use the instruments, of course, to make it really happen. So this is part of the learning pathway, of course. But what do we need? Many learning outcomes. I'll leave it for what it is. Uh, we need, of course, support for this program. Because this can never be left over to the one candidate. So if we look in the perspective of time, this candidate needs to be selected by the federation. The federation uh, also promotes a mentor to support this candidate. There will be only six to eight across Europe partic participating in the program. You need to give this candidate, of course, access yeah, within your own organization, to your own board meetings, access to your world, yeah, to introduce them to the world of governance. Uh, at the same time, because this is all in place, this is all here, yeah, um, uh, we need, uh, of course, this access for this uh, person and you're uh, em embracing this candidate. But once he's run this program, maybe you need to also be able to have a vision about his future within the boundaries of your federation. Yeah? That he can take an active role and uh, active contribution uh, for your national programs. Um, EHF, uh, well, that's, uh, they will support this program, of course, program and team management. They will take care of the moderators, and then it uh, should go. This means October 2023, we want your candidate, we want your mentor, yeah, and we want your vision ahead, what you want to do with these candidates. Are you needing this type of people for the future of your, of your country? I think so. And then the program runs and ends in April 2025. It's an eight-month active learning program. Well, what I learned from joining this Erasmus program was that I, that I had the chance to, to meet and engage with people who are active with hockey from all over Europe. Uh, and it's been really nice to get to know them, uh, hear what their experiences are with this program and how they work with it, uh, hear about their approaches, their challenges, and also how to overcome them. Um, and it's, it's been a really interesting journey. And then also as a trickle-down effect, it uh, gives you the chance to create something uh, in the country that you're coming from. Um, and that's, uh, I think, uh, also a very, very exciting journey to uh, move forward with. Uh, I feel like I've learned that empathy is a really important part of leadership. And 
also helped me with connecting with other volunteers in hockey at the moment. And besides that, I learned a lot of ways and tools how to approach others and connect them and make them comfortable in trying their own leadership skills. I think uh, joining the program helped me with a lot of soft skills. The, for example, time management, uh, and especially public speaking, um, are things that help me a lot. Um, by trying, by speaking in front of a group, um, that's something I learned. Um, but also respecting other opinions, thinking of other per perspectives, is a really nice way uh, of learning by joining this, uh, this Erasmus program. Um, so I think I've learned to be more collaborative in my work and I think I've gained from being able to uh, express ideas and uh, see other people's ideas from different cultural backgrounds to broaden my own mindset towards leadership and project management. Um, it's been really nice to connect with um, lots of different people and learn about their cultures and their backgrounds, um, uh, you know, how hockey is played in different countries and what type of systems and youth development programs they have or haven't got. Um, so yeah, it's been, it's been really interesting just to, to learn some of them things. Um, what I learned from this program is there are so many stakeholders and you have to cooperate between all these different stakeholders. It could be clubs, it could be national organizations, it could be researchers, um, and everyone has to come together and, uh, and collaborate on, on a project. I really find that inspiring.